can really bring AI into the IV, into the code itself, into your environment. All right. Um, so one of the things that you know we noticed uh, with with a lot of developers is that they spent a lot of time in multiple things within the IDE and one of them is really just getting up to speed. How many times do you notice that when you when there is a new pull request that has landed in your transition or there's a new project, how much time do you spend on just getting to know what is it? What is this new code that has come in or what is this new project? Spend so much of time just trying to understand what's happening there, right? And you spend so much of time writing boilerplate code. There's a new, say, for example, new API that has to be done. There's always some boilerplate code if you're adding a new endpoint to an existing API, right? Or if you're just adding a new page to an existing web app. So much of boilerplate code, which essentially is not that important as much as the business logic itself, right? And also, of course, diagnosing issues. Uh, I was I was coming across this some uh, you know some meme somewhere saying that a lot of what developers do is five percent coding and ninety five percent figuring out why is it not working, right? And spending so much time uh, you know figuring out why is this not working. Trust me, I have had so many sleepless nights as well trying to figure out what it is is laying in bed like that and then waking up suddenly and like aha I know that satisfaction is totally different, right? If you have the machine with you, so. Um, I think that's where that's where you know uh, tools and AI solutions like um, GitHub Copilot really come into play. And one of the things that we really speak about when it comes to GitHub Copilot is it's an AI pair programmer. The most important thing, most important thing about AI or even GitHub Copilot is that there is a limit. All right, um, and it's it's very very important to understand what are the limitations. And in this specific case, I'm going to be specifically talking talking about uh, the limitations of uh, you know GitHub Copilot. And uh, you know the first thing is that GitHub Copilot really works with uh, any language, even something like assembly or COBOL. If anyone has used it before, all right, it works with COBOL as well. Now, uh, of course, GitHub Copilot has been trained on uh, billions of lines of publicly available code from the internet. So, therefore, there is a lot more training data for some of the popular languages, uh, be you know JavaScript or Python or .NET or something like that, right? Um, so, while if you use something like Cobol or so, uh, some of the lesser known languages, it might still give you some suggestions, but it might not be entirely accurate because there's just not so much enough of training data uh, that was probably needed. And the second thing is that you know, Copilot offers code suggestions, correct? Right? It's not a compiler, okay? So you can't uh, you know, expect or there are no guarantees that the code that it writes will actually compile. But that's the job of the compiler, uh, not, not AI or GitHub Copilot. And similarly, it's also not an automated tester. So it's not going to kind of really test what is the code that it has been generated, whether it's bug free or error free or not. You still need to kind of use your judgment and your automated test to make sure it's fine. And while also GitHub does some you know light uh, analysis to prevent giving you code suggestions which have vulnerabilities, but it doesn't do a whole lot more. It doesn't act as a security scanner looking at is there a SQL injection here. Is there a memory leak here or something of that sort? So of course there are the specific set of tools that uh, you would have to you would have to use and uh, leverage whatever is at your uh, disposal. All right, and uh, you know the final thing is AI can't read your mind. Okay, uh, and in fact I I kind of give this uh, give this analogy uh, to a lot of to a lot of folks. Sweating aircraft is coming behind me. Uh, to a lot of folks, where you know, think about how you use GPS today, how you use Google Maps, all right? So very easy. Now, if any of you are brave enough to turn on Google Maps, all right, and then say, let the car drive and follow these Google Maps, you wouldn't do that. Even though if you have self driving cars, 
you wouldn't entirely suggest, and GPS wouldn't know what you, uh, you know, where you want to go or what you want to do. All right. Sometimes it's great. I almost once, you know, stopped very short of running into Ulema Lake um, when Google Maps was showing me go straight. Um, but it was very good. I saw there's a small store. I got on it bought. But end part is that yeah, I can't read your mind. So you have to be explicit about some of your suggestions and uh, you know how you want to how you want to really use it. All right. Okay. So let's let's take a pause over here and uh, let's uh, let's jump into the demo where I want to show you how all of this can come into action uh, when you are working when you are working on uh, you know any any project. All right. Thank you.